tonight on an excessively long ASG. We got anime. We got sports. And we got questions. But do we have full cognitive function? No. Anyways, All Systems Go starts right now. Welcome to tonight's show. I'm Tony Peer, reaching through the service to the wet. And I'm Ian, the name of the sound of the name. That's a control reference. And yes, Corey did write that. Let's get right into it. Mario 35 might have passed on to the great big video game paradise in the sky. But there's a new game taking its place. Pac-Man 99, the new game in the series of Retro Battle Royale games, has just been announced for the Nintendo Switch. Just like Tetris 99, Pac-Man 99 includes you and 98 other Pac-Men battling out until there's only one Pac-Man standing. To do this, you'll need to eat as many ghosts as you can and send Jammer Pac-Men flying into enemy territory. Jammer Pac-Men are used to slow down your opponents, but you'll have to watch out because the same could be done to you. Pac-Man 99 is out now to play for free for all Nintendo Switch Online members. Good grief. Last Sunday, during the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the animation special event, Joestar Inherited Soul, it was announced that Part 6 of the series will be getting an animated adaptation. Part 6, Stone Ocean, follows Jolene Cujo, the best Joestar, and her brief stint in the Green Dolphin Street Jail. Not many details were given about this upcoming adaptation, but we did get a look at Jolene's new style, and we got to hear from her voice actress, Ai Feru. As a fellow fan of the series, I am very excited to see her bring Jolene to life. JoJo fans will also be happy to hear that the last brand new character announced for Jump Force's second wave of DLC characters is none other than Giorno Giovanni. Giorno is the third JoJo representation in the game next to Jotaro and Dio. Giorno will be able to use various unique moves with his stand Gold Experience Requiem. Giorno Giovanni is the final character in the second pass of DLC characters for Jump Force. Giorno will be arriving to Jump Force on April 13th next week. In other news, Somehow not related to JoJo, a new sports anime is on the horizon. Remain is an upcoming series from MAPPA Studio about a former water polo player diving back into the pool after some time off. Minato Miyomizu appears to have been injured in middle school, keeping him out of the sport for some time. Now in high school, he found a brand new team to play with, and as always, shenanigans ensue. Remain is set to swim onto screens this year. Breaking news, everyone. We've just gotten word that Garrett Miller, our entertainment director, and Gu Aficionado has recently passed on. This is truly a sad day for all of us here at TV2. We have exclusive footage of his last words. Let's take a look. Before Garrett left us, he gave birth to one of the beautiful gifts in the world. It's so adorable, I can just eat him up. It's very unfortunate to see this happen, Garrett. He was one of the best. The goo was just too much for him. He was too far gone for any of us to do anything. Now with Garrett gone, who's gonna take over as entertainment director? Looks like there's, um, it's time for me to step up to the plate. As the new entertainment director, Coming I up! Watch as our producer Dan the Man interviews athletes from the Kent State esports scene. Hey, bro, not cool. All systems go. We'll be coming right back. Stay tuned. Ow, I've never really been a sports guy, but I'm pretty excited for what Dan's cooked up for us this week. He's been kind enough to make us a gentle introduction into the world of esports. Let's get into it. Okay, thank you for joining All Systems Go today for this wonderful esports interview segment. Would you like to introduce yourself, make a grand appearance? Absolutely. 
My name is Toby Stoffer. I'm Joe Cantian. Hi, I'm Paul Rondo. I'm Tyler Hallam. I'm a sophomore at Kent State University. I'm an English and translation major. I'm a senior at Kent State, a visual communication design major. I am also the main support for Kent State University's varsity Overwatch team. I play Rocket League at Kent State for Kent State Esports. I play for the Kent State varsity Valorant team uh, Esports. I'm president for the club side of the Kent State Esports program. Esports has brought a lot of things to a lot of people. What is it personally uh, brought to you? Uh, it definitely uh, just brought me a career. I really think that the friendships I've made through esports uh, are something that I'm going to value for a lot longer than maybe just the game that I'm playing. The biggest thing for me is kind of just like the sense of like community. Really built up, built up these uh, links, uh, and we just kind of understand how each other play, and we we're able to play off of that and. Uh, it's really a great uh, sense of, really a great sense of just, I guess, camaraderie throughout the whole team and we know how to work together and work well together, so yeah. Uh, it really showed me what I want to do uh, with my life. I've changed my major a lot uh, in college and I mean, I have a military background, I was in flight school, like I, I've done so much other stuff, but when I started out with just a small little team of gaming and now it's blown up to be this giant program, uh, I, I've pursued so much more in this field with like my major. Uh, it, it's really become my career path, and without it, I mean, I don't even know what I would be doing right now. I it, this is like everything. I've found just an amazing sense of like camaraderie, and it's really a place where I think it's it provides a lot of opportunities to people connect in a way that I think is really unique because of the way that the teams are structured and the way that the game is played. You spend a lot of time with these people, you get to know them really well, and um, there are conflicts for sure, but those conflicts being resolved in a productive way just makes the team work stronger. How do you feel about esports growing over time? And it, could it be accepted by the, I don't know, overall broadness of the general public one day, like uh, mainstream uh, mainstream sport has? Um, I definitely think that one day esports is going to get to basically like you said like as mainstream and as big as uh main sports like football basketball like i think that we're going to be at that level i actually think we might even go beyond that level eventually um i just feel like the reason for that is that esports is an anyone can play uh with football and basketball you feel like you have to be a professional or like physically fit um clearly with esports you don't exactly need to be super physically fit you don't need to be this bodybuilder type of a person or have a certain height requirement um you could be whatever you want and you could be a really good professional gamer and make a career out of it that's that's something that's really special about video games it's it's open to anyone any walk of life any you know any physical ability it's all thrown out the window and it's it's are you willing to dedicate the time to get better at the game anybody can be great at any game it just comes down to your willpower of, am I willing to do this? Am I willing to dedicate the time and the effort to get good at this game? That's where it, you can compare it to real sports because you have your practices in real sports and you have to be focused during that time or else it's a waste of time. So I definitely understand when people, you know, they, they dog on it for not being physical and you're just sitting there, but a lot of it, it's very mental. It's, it's mentally taxing and you have to be really strong mentally in order to move up the ranks, move up the ladder of esports in general, for sure. This is what we know the team we're going against. This is what we know they like to do. And so how can we adapt to that and how can we counter it using our own strengths? Because every team's going to have obviously different strengths based on uh, specific players, what people like to play, how people like to play. And so being aware of that is super, super important. So that's our first step. And then from there once we've kind of prepared team play wise gameplay wise i think the next step is mentality um because if you go into a game super nervous no matter how good your foundations are you're still not going to perform because your nerves are just going to get in the way of everything you have planned everything you prepared and um that step arguably is more important than the second one because nerves can really just wipe out a whole team um so that's really our second step is making sure that we're focused, making sure that we've got confidence in our team play and in each other, that we're going to do what we need to do to pull out the win. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you very much for uh, coming here for this wonderful yeah. interview and giving your insightful view to the world of esports. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you for having me. Did Dan's video get you thirsty for some more esports content? Well, good news. We got some special guests here to talk to you about it. Don't go anywhere. All systems go. We'll be right back.
Hello everyone! Today I have a few sports legends with me. That's right, eSports is here to stay at ASG. With me, I welcome Justin, Ben, and Tanner. I have a few questions for you guys regarding the past, uh, present, and the longevity of eSports. So I will start with, regarding the past of eSports, what moments do you think really stood out and shaped eSports to be what it is now? Whether it's moments you've experienced at Kent or just moments that you've watched. Anyone is free to comment. Well, I think that we can talk about like, I guess we can go back as far as like StarCraft II uh, in like Korea and like Asian times. But like, I, I guess the most notable event that I can think of is like season five of League of Legends in Staples Center was like, the, it was like a big event in LA. The whole arena was sold out and it was like really got the attention and led into like the franchise leagues that we see today with Overwatch League and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, ben? Yeah, I was gonna say in the East, like in Asia and, and Korea especially, like StarCraft II was a huge thing, but here it's now like Fortnite. That's what you hear about, like people like Ninja and Buga, like a lot of, it, it's kind of just making the scene more mainstream, because it used to be just like nerds playing games, but now it's like, you can have people that are making like literally millions of dollars off the game. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the best, like most exciting part about it. Mm -hmm. And with the current state of esports, do you guys think there are any mistakes being made or smarter decisions that could be being made to progress the industry further? I would say a smart decision that's being made is building up stuff in college. Cause like, especially with our program here in like Akron, you're really kind of providing esports for kids that probably wouldn't have access to it if they didn't know about programs and stuff like that. So I think eventually once esports becomes like a mainstay at colleges, it'll be a lot easier for people to get into it and compete on teams and things like that. And I think then that'll translate to the pros. Mm -hmm. I think there's like a lot of, um, you know, kind of normal like uh, starting jitters that esports is having right now in like the professional scene at least like everybody's just trying to figure out what they what they need to do to like uh, make it profitable like there's a lot of, like the franchise leagues that have been coming out with overwatch and, and league of legends like two years ago like all these really high uh, impact names are like trying to get into the scene like dan gilbert owns a team uh, golden uh, state warriors owns a team and it's because of the covid times it's been like trying to, it, they've been trying to find a way to like make a profit out of it but um but yeah, so I, I think future, uh, I think the college scene is like really the next step too. So yeah, especially like starting them off because honestly, if I'm uh, being real, I would have no idea of like how to even get into esports or like streaming or anything. But Ken having that program is such a like great stepping stone. So I definitely agree with that. And what do you guys think makes esports different than regular sports? Um, I think esports kind of started out. Um, a little different from regular sports, but now I think they're adopting a lot of new strategies that are making them like any other sport. I mean, now you have teams that are meeting up for practices and you know they're on like rigorous schedules and even have dietitians and stuff like that. So um, I think esports is quickly becoming just as competitive and serious as you know any other sport you could find at the Olympics, um, just as fast as uh, the world can kind of adopt for that. Mm -hmm. I would I think, say, oh, sorry, I, I'd say just the accessibility as well, like compared to Sometimes like people talk about like, the NBA, you have to hit the genetic lottery. Like eSports, you can just you know, pick up a console and then do what you want to do in terms of the game and everything like that. So I think it's easier for people to get into and it's an easier spectator sport because you can play it if you'd want to at a competitive level. Yeah, I think there's more similarities and differences at this point than, than people give it credit for. I think that a lot of like the physical attributes of traditional sports like football have been kind of what they've done, or like what's been focused on in the past as like what makes esports not as legitimate. But um, there's like high level injuries and, and, and things like that in esports as well. Like the, like you were talking about the dietitians and everything. Uh, collapsed lungs are like a common injury in esports because of the stress that they go under and like the, um, I guess the lifestyle that they have to portray, which is similar to like a lot of the injuries that you can sustain in like football and stuff like That's that. That's terrifying. So, yeah. It's, <laughs> Um, it's crazy, and like God. carpal tunnel, and obviously are a lot of the other mm -hmm. things. But um, yeah, those are the more like obvious ones. Yeah, these guys uh, practice 10, 12 hours a day, and it's crazy. So mm -hmm. it's definitely uh, very serious for them. Mm -hmm. Now, what made you guys get into esports? I think we all kind of started uh, when we were younger. Just started playing video games with our friends or with our family and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, maybe we realized that we 
uh, kind of had a competitive edge or we liked competing um, or we just kind of found out about it uh, through campus. I know that's what happened with me is when I first got here, um, I think it's called the Black Squirrel Fest, uh, where they have all the different clubs and stuff on campus and you can meet all of them, get, mm -hmm. their, get their information they have and that stuff. and kickoff, I know. Yeah, yeah, so I got, I heard that there was an esports team and I had no idea about it before and I went ahead and tried out and uh, yeah, I've been with them ever since. That's awesome. Yeah, similar with me, I just like started playing when I was, I, I, I actually played StarCraft way back in middle school uh, and then like I started playing League of Legends with some friends of mine in high school. It was like that that core group of friends that you always have in like high school where you just like playing uh, like hanging out all the time. It's like one summer I just played League and Minecraft like all summer like 12 hours a day. It was not healthy. Um, but yeah, so that just led into like me finding the pro scene, me watching it more than I play nowadays mm -hmm. um, and, and getting into the collegiate time. So. Okay, well that's great to hear. I'm so happy that you guys have like such a great opportunity and all of that. So that being said, that feeling when the imposter is sus, you're about to feel that amugas. Last week, a new map for the hate game Among Us came out. We here at ASG love video games, so we played the new map for a little bit. Here's some highlights featuring the ASG cast and Dan, who's always the imposter. So. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to All Systems Go. Let's play of the brand new Among Us map. Everybody, are you ready to find out who the imposter is? I sound good now. No. All Systems Go <laughs> roll call. Let's go. All systems go to space. Goodbye. Why does it say imposter on my screen? Where am I going? Oh, I'm nowhere near here. This uh, this map is quite the large map. Quite the large boy. Oh, I have hands. That's unsettling. That's quite unsettling. Uh, I hear someone in the vents. Don't you dare touch me. I also gotta pause my music. Oh, no, 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 no. It was green. Oh god, Lo yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, dark I, green. Lo lock yeah. lock and core. Dude, I, I, I can have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, well, I can confirm. I think you Kyle, man. <laughs> <laughs> I I I landed on the body from from the steps. Okay. okay I okay. I as I'm coming down the steps, I I watched I watched a murderer take place. Okay. Good. We all made we all we all made a good decision. <laughs> good. You say that. You say that, and then freaking. Bye. Bye. Oh. This is dramatic as hell. Oh, that's a brand new oh, intro. Wow. Oh. Just just just. Oh, we can select where we spawn. I didn't even notice that from before. Oh my God, we can. Oh no, he's gonna kill my producer, Dan. No. No! Evil white boy moments. No! All right. Well, we all, okay, so. Okay, so. White boy evil. Um, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> who's Mr. Milk again? That would be me. Oh, I thought you were the bear. Cause... No, I think the bear is Max. Oh, I, I'm just, you know, profile pictures of bear. I feel like we were around each other for enough time where it's like, you know, you could have killed I mean, me or vice versa. So I think it's Darian. Counterpoint, though. Can you really trust Kyle? Yes. Uh, for n Yes. <laughs> I trust Egg Yolk. You killing Dan, it just felt too fitting. Yeah! yeah they, uh, maybe killing Dan was a little selfish. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Oh man, what's this red text on my screen? What? What the heck? Where on Earth am I? Oh yes, I can finally download the TF2 heavy update. Perfect. Oh, oh my God, two people died. Where's he at? Oh, oh lordy. What's who up? did you vote for, Dan? Who did you vote for? I voted for Darian again. He always votes for me, so screw you. It's it's a chance all up in the air. So. It doesn't matter. I need, I just needed to make sure that more people voted for Darian. <laughs> Baby, let's go. No! <laughs> this is 
See, Darian? Darian, let that be a lesson. That's how it feels when everyone always votes for you for no reason. I can enjoy this feeling. I don't know why you can't. <laughs> what the heck? Good luck, guys. Good luck, everyone. Bro, why does it keep saying imposter on my screen? Messed up. I want everyone to know that if I die first, it's because I won the last two rounds. And if I don't die first, uh, edit this out and never speak of it again. Don't you touch me! Don't you touch me! Don't you touch me, Tony! Get away! No! Get away! Ah! I trusted you, Tony. I want you to know that I am deeply hurt. That was homophobic. Yep, I died first. Already? What? How? Already? Oh, Dude, me and Max, dream what? team over here, man. <laughs> yeah, no, as soon as the game started, I just started killing. For, like, I'm gonna go sulk in the I corner thought. here. I'm literally gonna oh, go yeah. sulk in the corner. Everyone on the count of three. One, two, three, bye. One, two, three. Bye! bye. Leader of men. Bye. Leader of men. No. No. Killing the show today. So, coming up after the break, Tony and I, we're just gonna take a little break from being anchors, and we're just gonna play some board games together. Like, like some good old pals. Plus, coming up after that, uh, Dan and Liam are actually gonna play Hot Ones. They're gonna have a terrible time. I actually hope they cry, but it won't happen. I know it won't. All systems go, we'll be right back. Welcome back to All Systems Go. We're here to play some board games. We are. Tony, yeah. tell us about your wacky goggles. Uh, I, like, my cameraman looks like he's, like, in space. I, I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Perfect. Dan, uh, Dan and Liam over there on the other camera actually have some cards for us. They have a couple challenges that we're going to do with these wacky goggles on. Whoa! Yes, and card number one gives you a task. Simple one, high five the person next to you. Okay, come here, buddy. Hey, hey, oh. where are you at? Are you, are you right there? Is, oh, 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 all right, are oh, you ready? Wait, are no, you? hold on, I lost you. Where'd you go? I'm, I'm right here. I'm right, oh, I'm right here. There you are. Okay, you okay. ready for the high five? Yeah. That is five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> yeah. That counts. And they did it. That counts. Yeah. <laughs> All right, for your next okay. challenge, draw a dog. A oh, dog. dog is the best win. Oh. 30 seconds, gentlemen. 30 seconds? Draw. Okay, hold on. Oh, oh that's 20 seconds? Speed oh. drawing? Oh. oh, Jesus. Help. Oops. I want it to be cute. I want oh. I want to be able to name it immediately. It's, uh -oh. it's going to be cute. All right. This is it's, a dog. It's going to be fantastic looking. This is, this is based off my dog back home. His name's Ricky. Shout out to Ricky. It's a cute little dog. Shoot. Ten I, seconds, gentlemen. I don't know. Ten what, seconds, um, gentlemen. I want to take this is. dog home. Uh, this isn't. This is. This is. Oh, uh, I wrote on the desk. Fantastic. All right, and time. <laughs> Show the camera your beautiful puppos. Where's camera two. Hey. Is this a dog? Here you go. Those beautiful puppies. Tony, let me see Which yours. Is, is this beautiful? Which one is mine beautiful? I think I I can't see yours. Oh, oh wait. Those dogs will be up for adoption uh, next. Here's your next challenge, Why is gentlemen. So small? I want you two to touch elbows with each other. Oh, I can touch elbows. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Oh. oh, this is easy. Yeah. I I can't reach. I don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna make it somehow. Hurry. Where's your elbow? I. <laughs> you guys are almost there. I might have to get up. That's okay. Look at that. This could be a new dance move. Where's your oh, oh, yeah. yeah! Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. All right. Watch the new handshake. Where's my tummy? Yeah, that's the best handshake I've ever seen. All right, your next challenge: take the cap off of a marker and try to put it back on. If Where's you succeed, my... you get a point. Wait, no touching your hands together. Hold your arms straight out in front of you. Those are the rules for this one. Uh, okay. Ease it in. <laughs> I see. I, I see. Tony is going for the very bold vertical approach. Ian is attempting uh, horizontal. Uh, I think. Having some struggle. Hands coming together like magnets. Are they north to south or north to north, repelling one another? I got it. I got it. Game's over. I won. All right, Tony, you win. All right. Coming up right now, we're going to go over to our good friends, Dan and Liam, our producer and our cool friend, Liam. And they're going to eat some tough stuff to eat. Mm, yes, yes. Now we have delicious. You got your cards ready? I do have my cards ready. We don't have any questions. 
Oh, but we, we do have three. two fortunate hosts to give us some questions and a timer countdown, just so we can we. be nice and spicy. Would you ready to eat the yes. very first wing? Cheers. Starting with Tabasco sauce. Start with Tabasco, nice and simple before we start. just ramp it right I, up. I first question, start. gentlemen. All right, the first question. What would you do if you won the lottery? Mm. 30 seconds. Easy. Put all my friends through college, travel the world, buy my mama house. Bam. Liam. I'd buy three boats. Three. All three right. Of them. Number two. Uh, you find the magic lamp. What are your three wishes? I'll let you go I'm first. wishing for three more boats. I'm going to dip in. Is that, a di is that one wish or three wishes? Like no, no. Three separate wishes, for all boats. Boat. Oh, okay. Dan? My first wish would be to find a female genie so I can have more wishes. Then I would probably have a rabbit farm because then I would never go hungry and I'd have just bedding nonstop. The wish last wish, I'd probably just waste. All right. All right. Next All right. question. You just pooped in a public restroom and realized there's not toilet paper. What do you do? Tony, did you just eerily predict the future tonight with this hot, hot sauce right here? Maybe. Right, Maybe so I just did. Oh, this is it. This is real. What would I do? Say goodbye to your underwear and socks. Mm -hmm. sock here we go. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, guys. Oh, I'd What's probably use my sock. Or I just bribe the dude in the stall next to me. Oh, that's disgusting. That's bad. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Dan, what's the meanest thing you've ever said to someone in someone's face? Somewhere you owe a tree an apology be because it's producing one. oxygen for you. What was it? What was the question? What's the meanest thing you've ever said to someone's face? I said you smelled like onions so bad you're literally making my eyes water. Oh, like right now? Yeah. Mm, yes. Hilarious. <laughs> We're eating the person that you told All right. to. All um, right. Next question. Uh, what's your best and worst uh, roommate qualities? <sighs> Is this a last app question? Uh, the yeah. hottest of hottest with two, over two million scoping you know, units. You know Are you what? ready for a dab? It the is. Final dab. The final dab refuses to come out. <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, that is so much more than a dab. It's the drop from uh, Are you ready? SpongeBob. It is. All right, what are the best roommate qualities? Uh, it can be pretty clean. Um, I like to cook. Worst roommate qualities. Whoa, that tastes like purple. Oh. <laughs> um, worst roommate quality? Mm, I like to shower a lot. I waste water. Oh, me too, man. Me too. What about you, Liam? I do my dishes right after I use them. And uh, my worst one, um, uh, I, I live uh, with you. I live with you. It's when you sing to me and yeah. sleep. I yeah. sing too much. I play too much loud music when people are trying to sleep. Especially in a sleep. Oh my god. All right. Sounds good, guys. Well done. You did it. Thank you. Good job. No one's a winner here. No one's a winner Nobody's here. Nobody's a winner. All right. Well, good. as they eat the rest of their chicken, we'll be right back. Hello, and welcome to a very fast game show. I'm Darian, your host. I graduated and shouldn't be here, but I come back stronger than a 90s trend. Today, our contestants' video game knowledge will be tested and, most likely, found to be lacking. Let's get started. First question is for Corey. It is, in the original Black Ops 1 version of the Call of Duty map Nuketown, what are the colors of the main houses? Yellow, red, and blue. Wrong. Anyone want to steal? Kayla. Yellow and blue. That is incorrect. You, you are, you're all dumb. It's yellow and green. No points. Green. Good. All right. All right. Yeah, there's only two. <laughs> yes. All right. Next question goes to Jeremy. Grand Theft Auto 3 is set in which city? Liberty City? Correct. Point for Jeremy. There are only like three cities in that whole universe, so. <laughs> <laughs> valid. Valid. Okay, next question is for Kayla. Oh, this is going to be perfect. In the Danganronpa series, this, the antagonist often takes the form of this bear. Bait. Correct. Point for Kayla. Pandering. <laughs> Pandering. There are multiple Danganronpa fans in here, Jeremy. It just have to go to Kayla. There's one. Whatever. All right, Ian, here's let's, let's turn to you. What is the first zone in the original Sonic the Hedgehog game? Green Hill Zone. Correct. Point for, point for Ian. So those things are now one for, one for Jeremy, one for Kayla, one for Ian, and nothing for Corey. Hi. But I don't like worry, this. Corey, you got another chance here. The Super Nintendo Classic included 21 games, including one which saw its first release on the system. Name that game. <laughs> Super Mario Brothers 2. Wrong. Anyone want to steal? That is Star Super Fox 2. Jeremy, another point for Jeremy. That's two points for Jeremy. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> Jeremy's gonna love this one. This JRPG franchise spent its life being exclusive to PlayStation and Nintendo consoles before making the jump to Xbox with its third slash twelfth installment. That would be King Damn Hearts. That is correct. Another point for Jeremy. 
He's up to th he's just crushing you guys wow. right now. Unbelievable. All right, this next one is for Kayla. How many different colored ghosts are there in the original Pac-Man arcade game? Oh, I see the cheating. I see that. That's cheating. How much was I thinking? Four? Correct. That's Point cheating. for Kayla. You have no evidence. Yes, we do. All right, and the final question goes to Ian. Oh, hi. This was the code name for the Nintendo GameCube during production, and it also inspired the name of its emulator. Uh, hmm. Game Sphere. Time is up. Anyone want to steal? That's the Corey. Dolphin. Corey raised my his hand politely, so he gets another point. You have yes. enough points, Jeremy, because if, if my count is right, and I think it is, I think you just won. Jeremy just won. Which means I don't even need the tiebreaker. No, wait. I want to know what it was, though. I, we want to know. Right, actually, okay, we'll do this one. This one will be for five points. Oh, sweet. Oh, I <laughs> love <laughs> these. It's like Family Feud. Nothing <laughs> matters until the end. True. Right. Guitar Hero 3 introduced boss battles of the series with guitarists such as Slash, Tom Morello, and this mythological victor, figure who serves as the final boss. Lucifer. Five points for Ian, so I think that's... Whoop! I think Ian just stole your win. Let's go! He's the only character I played as. <laughs> Good choice. He looks so cool. I was going to say Trunk. And that means that the winner is Ian. I was going to say the Grim Reaper. Trunk or should be the answer. Ian. Look at this. Your prize. Oh. You won the parental rights to Garrett's baby. Oh, sweet. Yeah, uh, good luck. Thanks. Yay, orphans. He's so cute. It's great. Be careful. Why would we? It why? looked like he was going to fall. Why would he fall? I'm so strong. Do you want to hold him? Yeah. What's his, wait, what's his name? He's your child now. You get to name him whatever you want. I get to name him? He's your child. Throgmorton. <laughs> <laughs> is he a skateboarder? <gasps> yeah, he oh is. My it's my cousin. God. He's handed out to my cousin, Throckmorton. He's so good at skating. Hey, little guy. Say oh, his he... name. Throckmorton? Yeah. You smell so good. I love the scent of a fresh, freshly born baby. That's weird. Give him back. <laughs> it's don't... like lime for no, some reason. No. You're no Be longer careful. allowed. You're Be careful. no longer allowed near my child. That was weird. That Can was I babysit weird. him? No. There Why would you I want to sit on this baby? question for you, buddy. Okay. In the original Silent Hill game, what does the letter that goes to the protagonist say? Silent Hill. It says... A um, hill where you have to be silent. Q? I don't... I've never played Silent no. Hill. No! It says nothing. Oh. It's blank. It's junk mail, Darian. Well, that, that question doesn't count because I'm the host here. You're it not the host. It says Mario. Please I'm, come to the castle. I baked a cake. That's my whole thing. Princess not, not in this segment. As long not as we're in the boundaries teach. of this segment, I am in charge. That means that question was invalid. Ask him a question. Hey, Don't get it wrong. Darian, what is the mystery mystery about Bella Goth in The Sims? What is the Why is she so goth? Nope. <laughs> no, everyone knows that, Darian. That's not the mystery. It's that she went missing. Uh oh. I hate it when people go missing. Uh. All right, so coming up after after this, we got, oh. dude, what do we even have? Tony, can you tell me what we got up coming after this? Um, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Oh, I love it. ASG. Um, and I think we should leave it as a surprise. A surprise? A surprise. Okay. I love surprises. Just like this beautiful Throgmorton that I'm holding. It's, it's a beauty to the eye. But, you know, you know, you know Making content is fun. Ah, oh, wait. Tony. And I think... I'd like to give you a little reminder before we keep going. What? This is, in fact, our last in-studio episode. Why is That not? we're going to have for the whole season. It's not. It is. How does that make you feel, buddy? It makes me feel sad. Sad? It makes me feel really sad, actually. Oh, I'm sorry. I actually think that this is our, going to be our last appearance on camera. What? No. What would you like to say to the fans. You know, I want to really say that ASG has been a great, amazing experience. Mm. It's, it's been such a great, you know, fun time. I, I got to meet you for the first time. I got to meet you. You know, you've been Thanks. actually a great co-host. I remember I saw you for the first time. Didn't know how I felt about you, but you're actually a really great dude. You know that? Thanks, bud. I actually feel the same. Uh, I usually don't do things in college, so this is like a whole new experience for me. I'm really glad that I did it. All right. Well, I think that's all we have to say to the camera, but... But, uh... Yeah. Let's, um, let's change the subject. I actually might start crying. All right. All right, Ian. Well, um, 
Do you love bowling? I do love bowling, yeah, actually. I do. Well, coming up after the break, we've got what's essentially a music video highlight reel from our ASG versus Agenda Bowling Night. See you there. They said it could never be done. They said it would never happen. They said that we aren't them. And that they are not us. But together, we came together under one roof for a good old fashioned all systems go and agenda bowling match. Let's knock down some pins. Strike! <laughs> This is epic. 
We came, we bowled, and ASG lost respectfully. Max, your team and the agenda bowled an excellent game. Oh, uh, thanks, but we couldn't have done it without Kayla. Seriously, MVP. Thank you. <laughs> and that brings this in-studio season to a close. We'd like to thank all of our faithful viewers and our beloved followers. All systems go, signing off. The agenda will be back soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Until Whoa. next time, yeah. all systems go, signing off. Have a wonderful night. Somebody once told me the world! Hey fam. Hey fans. We thank you for following us for eight beautiful episodes with a wonderful and mysterious Zero episode. Over this season, we've watched all of our cast and crew shine beyond their wildest dreams. Expectations have been shattered, and I personally couldn't be prouder of them. Corey and I have been very impressed by all of their hard work and determination. Some of my favorite memories include sitting up until 3 a.m. on Discord every single night working with people and watching the progress blossom through Premiere Pro as we struggled to learn a program that none of us really truly knew how to fully understand, but little bits and pieces come together to create something magical and whole. Do you have a favorite memory, Corey? I think my favorite memory would have to be going bowling for six hours yes. with the agenda, finally breaking our little rivalry that we had. We're friends now. We're friends. They've definitely formed quite a strong bond and friendship with the agenda because I know Corey can recall just as well as I can. Previous seasons, we were not the agenda. They were not us and we were not them. But now we have a new bond that we leave behind us. This beautiful season eight, we wanted to make it great. Hey! They said it couldn't happen. They said it couldn't be done. But it turns out that season eight was great. And as a plus, it's nowhere near over. Many more episodes wait. Many more beautiful memories will be had between us and all of our cast and crew. Not only that, even though Corey and I are going to say our final goodbyes to TV2 and Kent State as a whole here tonight, we get to watch everyone blossom and grow and, well, I, I don't know about you, but I can't see ASG being put into better hands. We have two amazing assistant producers. AP is not assistant producer. Associate producer. Associate producer. That's what it stands for. Always, always, always. I couldn't do. I couldn't do this show without Corey. I gotta say that. The show will also continue to blossom with everyone in the future. I don't know about everyone out there, but why stop at season eight? You need to go to season nine, season ten, ASG and beyond. I say. Every good composer dies after his ninth symphony, not his eighth. Yes. Season eight, the eighth symphony. It's not where it stops. Ninth will end on the highest of high notes. I really don't know what else to say. There's so much to say. There is. And there's just not enough time. I will say, I am happy to have finally met a baby that I'm not repulsed by. It is this is Throg Morton. I'm green with envy that Ian won. It is a beautiful baby. I wonder if people from prior seasons, prior producers would be proud of season eight because we looked up to them. We looked up to Jess, we looked up to Jeremy, Nicole. I mean, hopefully we've at least followed in those footsteps. I feel like we have, but that's up to them. <laughs> I can hear the laughter coming from the control room now. Hi, Lily, we love you. It's a good sign. <sighs> but yes, 
<laughs> to all of those here, to all of those there in the control room who really make the magic happen, they cannot be forgotten about. If we can get a spy cam of the control room to Again. show how much more magic happens, yes. That is where the true magic happens on this show. As much as we like to laugh and make jokes and videos in front of the camera, this show really absolutely could not happen without everybody behind the controls. Everybody put so much time and dedication into this show, I cannot thank them enough. If there was anything that we can hope for in the future, it would be that we even at least inspired somebody a little bit because we've been inspired ourselves by the people who came before us. Yeah. Corey, if there's one message that you can just kind of leave behind, if this was your <laughs> senior goodbye tombstone, Whoa. what would be your message that you would leave on? It's my motto, just vibin'. I joined this show, Jess messaged in a group chat, hey guys, my show's having auditions tonight, you guys wanna go? And I, that was the first time I'd ever heard of this place, and I auditioned. Now look at me. Yeah, look at you now. Look at me now. <laughs> Making $300 a day. Hi mom, I'm on TV. <laughs> yes. Oh. Our family would be very proud of us, and also highly smitten with us at the same time. If they had truly seen all the episodes of ASG, if they had seen the behind the scenes content. If they saw episode one, they'd cry. Yes. So, I guess really when it comes down to it, I'd personally like to thank everyone one last time. I've had a blast. I couldn't have made this show happen without Corey. Then I couldn't have made this show happen without Dan. <laughs> and we get to take home a beautiful baby child. Long term sh fans of the show, we have Goo Garrett's baby. This is, this is Garrett's last legacy. Yes. It shall live on. And we shall leave it somewhere here in the studio for it to blossom and grow. But not for too long, it would smell bad. And as for now, I'm Dan Snyder. And I'm Corey McGinnis. All systems go, season eight, is signing off. Have a good night. I'm so sad it's over!